Hey y'all, it's Andrew Couch here. And this Tidy Tuesday video, I'm actually not gonna go over this week's Tidy Tuesday um, data set, which is about African-American achievements. Instead, I actually got a comment um, asking me if I could do a video on forecasting models, specifically ARMA or auto regressive moving average models. And I've figured I would just kind of like look over some popular packages and kind of go over a kind of high level um, overview of these popular time series forecasting um, uh, packages in R. Um, just with recent events, I kind of wanted to talk about, um, I guess, African Americans and um, their representation in tech. So currently, there's a bunch of protesting about the systematic injustice against African Americans, specifically with police brutality. Um, and although I don't have a huge platform, I thought it'd be interesting for me to kind of talk about it just for a few minutes, um, especially as someone who is a person of color who lives in the Midwest, which is a predominantly white area. Um, I think it's one thing that I noticed when I was in my classes, uh, both in computer science and business classes, as, is that there was actually a, a decent amount of representation among, among Asian Americans, among white Americans. However, there weren't a lot of African Americans. So um, I was looking it up on, I guess, Brookings, um, and I saw that they had an article about black and Hispanic underrepresentation in tech. And basically, um, there is a huge problem in the tech industry with black and Hispanic or Latino uh, representation. And I think it's kind of important to be aware of this, even though I'm sure many of you guys are very inclusive and are not trying to, uh, you know, uh, uh, exclude these uh, minorities. But it's something to be, you know, it's kind of a food for thought thing. So if you see someone, um, kind of talk to them about it, talk about how it's even though it's a problem everywhere. It's probably in tech and, you know, maybe we can um, add some positive change. So I just wanted to bring this, bring that up a little short, uh, a little short, a little excerpt. Um, if you guys are protesting, uh, you know, bring a friend, wear a face mask and try to stay safe. Okay. So now that we're actually on time series stuff, um, one thing that I kind of wanted to show you guys is that, uh, so there isn't actually a lot of classes on time series data. Um, there's not a lot of stuff on time series data. That's one of the main reasons why uh, Facebook's profit package came out is they realized many people out of school or even outside of grad school do not have a lot of t uh, a lot of experience with time series analysis and forecasting. So I thought, well, let's see what resources we do have. And one thing I think everyone should be really aware of is that you can access a lot of these graduate level classes and kind of look over at least the slides and the, the lecture notes that they give out. Um, especially um, Ivy League level colleges or public Ivies or, you know, California colleges, many of them will actually post their uh, entire curriculum. And you can kind of just go over and kind of just go at your own pace and see what's going on. So for me, um, I spent the weekend just kind of looking at um, uh, UPenn, um, specifically Warren School of Business's time series classes. And I actually, most of my stuff came from the introduction to time series analysis, which is actually a part of an insurance class. Okay. And this is the lecture that I actually uh, got it from. I'll put the links in the description below and you guys can go over it, but I just want to show you what are auto regressive or ARMA models. And it's a combination between auto regressive models and moving average models. Okay. So I'm going to open up R and we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do a, you know, a short little uh, overview of the uh, ARMA models. Okay. So I'm going to do this tidy Tuesday ARMA um, ARMA models. Cool. Okay. Okay. And then instead of having the actual tidy models package, I'm actually going to look up, load up the tidyverse. Um, uh, the model data package, which comes from the uh, uh, tidy models package. And I'm also going to load up the uh, forecast package. So the forecast package was the original like package for most forecasting. However, now um, it's depreciated and people actually use the uh, uh, fable package. So the fable package is actually the, the successor to it, but when I was looking at it, I saw that the R command check is failing. So they might be changing some things. So I figured I would just kind of go with the OG uh, forecasting package and just do forecast. Okay. So we're going to do that. 
So with the model data, it actually comes with a bunch of uh, data sets. So we're going to first load in the Chicago data set. So I'm going to enter load that and you just use the data command and it will automatically load it. So we have this, uh, this, this, um, data frame or whatever it's, uh, five, 5,600 rows with 50 columns. And when I was looking at the actual, uh, data dictionary in the, uh, a model data PDF, you know, overview thing. They had a, just a short description of the Chicago data set. And the main idea is that they're trying to predict L train ridership, um, with all these features. And these features right here are called, uh, are the actual, uh, Chicago station names that are actually lagged features. So they're the previous, the last 14 days or the, the last two week, um, I think like two weeks ago, that was at the average ridership or whatever like that. They also contain like temperature data, uh, wind data, precipitation, just like overall weather stuff. And initially they also uh, have these, a uh, one hot encoded, uh, I guess like, you know, the, the, these are dummy variables of uh, sports stuff. So uh, if the Blackhawks are playing, they're probably gonna see more uh, uh, like activity in the trains. Uh, if they're away, then they're probably gonna be less. So we have that, those type of features. We're really not going to use any of these features, but we will probably uh, revisit this and do some more predictive modeling stuff in the future, which will be much, which will be more, uh, complex black box modeling stuff. But what we're really going to use is ridership and data and not data and ridership and date. So that's what we're going to do. Okay. So when we do Chicago, uh, I'm going to do select ridership and date and what we're gonna do is we're gonna plot this out um nope plus geom line okay so that's what we have here so one main thing with arma models is that we're actually trying to predict uh a data that is called stationary data so what is stationary data well, stationary data basically assumes that the average of whatever value you're trying to uh, predict, in this case, we're trying to predict average ridership. Uh, we're trying to predict ridership and we're saying the average ridership value should be the same. It is not changing. So when we, when we look at this, uh, we can see that there's a huge band. There's a bunch of noise. Um, there's not, there's a bunch of noise. There's a bunch of seasonality issues. Um, but if we look at it, we, it looks kind of the same. So I bet if I do a, uh, we could do like a yearly or monthly average. Uh, let's, let's see what we can do. I'm going to actually load up the, uh, what is it? The, uh, Uber date package. So that, that way we can do uh, more, uh, date work. Okay. So this is just kind of like a general EDA for how we're going to approach this forecasting problem. So we're going to say, uh, need to clean up and evaluate the time series components. Okay. And we're just going to do this in tidyverse first. Uh, the forecast package actually has some little helper functions, but we should just do it just to gain some intuition. Okay. So what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to, I'm actually going to select Chicago and I'm going to assign it to Chicago. Okay. So let's do this. So Chicago. Uh, we're going to, we're going to add some features. We're going to say mutate month equals month, uh, date. And this, and in this case, it's the, the, was it the number? I, I don't really want that. I want the, uh, uh, we want, we want, we might want to get the name too. So I'll do month dot abbreviation. I believe it's a list. So I can do that. Just a little, uh, inclusion with R. So now we have it instead of the, the number we have the month. Uh, so we're going to do that. Um, uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to name this month name, and then we'll say, um, month equals month date. Oh, okay. Month date. Okay. We're also going to add a year feature. So I'm going to say year equals year date. Okay. So now let's, now let's revisualize this. So ggplot. Yes, X equals date, Y equals year, and we'll say color equals uh, a year. 
Actually, we'll do uh, y equals ridership, and then we'll do geom line. Oh, and we got to mutate uh, as dot factor. So mutate year equals as dot factor year. Okay. Oops, and then let's screw that up too. Month. There we go. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing that there actually is some seasonality. Maybe I could do a geom smooth and then SE equals false. Okay. What are we seeing here? So we can see that ridership is increasing and then it, it's kind of like a hump, right? So it's like, it's getting more popular, maybe in like the, the mid summer fall, and then it starts decreasing around the winter periods, which makes sense. All right, great. So we see that there's some seasonal issues, right? And what we want to do is what we want to do is uh, actually kind of look at and kind of compensate for this. So that's what uh, forecasting is mainly used for. So forecasting, when people think about forecasting, they th think it's kind of like a, a very uh, sexy way of like predicting uh, years and years into the future using these crazy models. When in reality, we really want to control um, the time component and just predict um, the values. So when uh, what we're doing with the forecasting is we're basically saying that we want to account for any time dependent um, interactions and then just forecast, forecast the overall trend. So when we go to Chicago, um, we're going to convert this to a time series uh, object. Okay. Uh, well, I'm going to stop that. And what we're going to use is the MSTL, uh, which is basically it, what it says is it de decomposes it. Where it's basically a helper function to basically get the trends and uh, all the time uh, and basically all the uh, adjustments to it. So we're going to use the auto plot, which comes with the forecast package. And here's, here's what we get. So what it's saying is, okay, so here's our, here's our raw data. Here's the overall, overall trend. We're seeing that it's actually increasing. And then we have these values when we do the uh, fig dot height, fig dot height equals uh, 15. So we have a trend. We have our, uh, let me output of trend ridership. We have output trend of date. And then we have the remainder, uh, remainders of it that it, it can't account for. So there's some stuff that it can't account for. Cool. So we're also going to do is let's, let's convert this back. Let's, let's use another helper from it. And what we can do is, uh, we can do that. Uh, and then we can do the, uh, GGST, just GGTS. Oops. Um, you got to select. So it's saying that, uh, GG time series displays only for univariate time series. So we're just going to select the, was it a uh, ridership? Ridership, convert that to a time series object and then use the GG time series display. All right. So now we have this, we have what is our data, I believe. And then we have these other things, which are, um, auto correlation functions and partial auto correlation functions. So what, what does that mean? Um, a big thing with time series is understanding whether this, this data has correlation with the previous data. So when we think about correlation, we think of correlation between, uh, columns, right? And to the columns, however, auto correlation is correlation between rows. So that's what it's trying to do. And what this says right here is that, um, we have our X axis, which is lags. And then we have our Y axis, which is the auto correlation and partial auto auto correlation functions. What it's saying is it's comparing it to the previous lagged variables. Okay. And what do we see here is we see, uh, this kind of, a uh, what is it? L little like wave, right? And that's something where we can say, okay, this is a, a very specific trend. These lag or these, uh, these, this data is heavily correlated has a ton of auto correlation. Okay. Same with, uh, P partial auto correlation functions. What this does, is it tries to account for these seasonal changes and, uh, it still finds some more correlation, but it, it kind of dampens down. We can see some dampening effects. 
So how do we fix this? When we see this, we might think that, okay, well, maybe, uh, well, maybe this, this mean, this average, uh, this average ridership is actually non-stationary. So how can we change this data into a non-stationary data? One way to do this is instead of predicting, uh, instead of predicting the value, we can, we can predict the difference in values, which is called a differencing. Okay. So right here, we can see there's a huge seasonal trend. And then, in, and if we change it to, uh, a weekly change, uh, we can see that there is a stationary, really a stationary, the data becomes stationary. And this converts it to basically an ARMA model to a, uh, a RIMA model. Okay. So let's do it. So when we look at this data, uh, uh, we can actually use the mutate function and we can say ridership, uh, daily change. And that will equal to a uh, ridership minus, and then we can add an actual, uh, we can use the tidyverse and use, I believe the lag ridership and then one. And then we can also do just a sanity check and say, okay, look, lagged ridership equals lag ridership one, All right? So ridership 15.32, uh, 50.732, the change is 0.03. So we, we know that our, our, uh, our lagged variable or our, our differencing has worked. So we're going to say, uh, we suspect a, uh, non-stationary data, uh, data set suspect, uh, we'll, we suspect this data is non-stationary. So we will try using differencing. Okay. So when we look at this, we can do uh, ggplot y equals uh, writer. Uh, was it writership? Yep. Daily change plus gm1. Okay. And what do we see here? A much better picture. Uh, even though it's a very, uh, clunky, we can see that there is way less of a, less of a change when compared to say this one, where we can see there's an upward momentum, uh, into an increase. So one thing that we could say with this time series component as an increase in ridership is we could say that, okay, well, Chicago has probably just been increasing in uh, uh, population and we could just do a control for population and then the ridership will go into a stationary, um, state. Uh, that would, I am, see for this stuff, I would probably say, okay, we can do a, a time series linear model and uh, start messing with that. However, I'm going to focus mostly on the forecast package and on ARMA models. Okay. So, so when we see this, we can see that, okay, well, this, this is starting to look good. So we're going to start actually doing the ARMA model, but we want to do some more, um, plotting on it. Okay. So in this case, we're going to use the, we're going to select Chicago. We're going to use the Chicago, uh, data set, select, uh, 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 date and ridership daily change, convert that to a time series. And then, um, then plot out the, uh, oops, what the hell? Oh, yep. And then plot out using GT, GG time series display. Okay. So what do we see here? Still, there is some, uh, uh, there is still some stuff going on. Uh, we can still see that there's some auto correlation, but this, this could be an actual seasonal component instead of an actual moving, uh, uh, uh non-stationary data. So let's, let's, let's find out the, uh, the differences that we did in the pre in the, the previous chunks right here. We're using the MSTL. Okay. So Chicago select date and, uh, right. Writer daily change, throw in a time series, throw in that, uh, oops, oh. throw in that. And then we'll do the, uh, oops, auto plot. Okay. 
Okay, so it, it created the, it basically uh, found the trend. The trend is very minuscule. We can see that's a zero, a more of a negative trend, you know. Okay, and then we have the remainder that we can we can try to try to uh, fix. Okay. So when we actually do these um, uh, do these uh, uh, forecasting, we can we can kind of look at it. Uh, we can look at what ways we can do this. So with the forecast package, um, oops, we can look at that forecast package. We have a ton of different things we can do. Okay. A lot of it is just uh, kind of helper functions to do some post hoc analysis on it or some pre analysis on it. But um, the main functions that we're going to probably use is the auto arima function. which will basically tune the parameters for us. Okay. Additionally, they have other algorithms. So they have the R FEMA. Uh, they probably have, was it the BATS? Yeah, the, the BATS model. And they also have, uh, I, I think they also have like a neural network uh, in there. Let's see, where is it at? Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, was it SCLM? No, SCL. I don't know. So they used to, I'm pretty sure they have a neural network in there, but what we're actually going to use is the auto arima. So what we're going to do is we're going to, oops, we're going to select the ridership daily change. Uh, we're going to do a convert it to a time series and we're going to do the auto arima, uh, function. So we run that, we can look at our, um, auto arima results and it created an arima model with three with the parameters three comma zero comma three so the main parameters between it i believe is uh pdq uh so what it's saying is it's using uh one two and three auto regressive parameters and one two three moving averages and these are all like lag features so it's saying okay we're going to use uh like the previous day the second previous day and the third previous day as features. And we're also going to use the first, the average, uh, second moving average, third moving average. Okay. So once we do that, we can also use the forecast function. And, and I'll give you this a nice little interval of uh, future uh, change, it, future uh, predictions. We can also throw that into the auto plot. And you can see it, uh, these are the predictions it's making, right? So one thing that uh, you need to realize with, uh, let's see, I think it's H equals 20, right? We can do that. One thing with the, uh, yeah. So one thing with the uh, forecast and ARMA models is that the, the longer or the more drawn out forecast. So if you're trying to forecast in a longer, in the future, in a longer period of time, the more likely it's gonna regress to the mean. And what that means is if you're say trying to make a forecast, say a uh, three years ahead of, uh, uh, three years in the future, what it's going to do is it's going to start regressing where it's going to just predict zero because most of, uh, the ARMA models, uh, most of, uh, the ARMA models, uh, parameters is just using previous data and it's just kind of averaging it. Okay. So let's do this. Um, What we're also going to do is we're going to test out some other ones. So when we take the Chicago data set, oh, check out data set. What we can also do is we can use a, uh, the ETS function, which is ETS, which is basically a smoothing model. Okay. Uh, which is basically, which is uh, a component of the ARA model. In this case, the, the smoothing parameter or the smoothing part of it is the uh, AR part. So if we do the uh, forecast and an auto plot, oops. we see it's still produ producing the same thing, roughly the same thing. Okay. Um, let's see here. We can also kind of show how um, um, we can kind of also work with uh, non-stationary data. So 
if you see in the past, uh, oh, I, I don't think I did it in the past. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up a, a much um, sparser data set. So what we're gonna do is the uh, load in the uh, drinks data set. So drinks, and this is basically, um, I guess, uh, monthly alcoholic beverage sales uh, compiled from the St. Louis Fed. Um, so I'm gonna do some renaming. So rename, and so sales equals two. And what we can do is uh, we can just convert this straight into a time series and we can do like, uh, uh, what is it, the, what function is that called? Um, and we can do the uh, uh, GGTS display. Oops. Oh. Select uh, sales. Okay, and we can select the sales. And what we can do is we can kind of look at this. So right here, we, we know that it is, uh, the, it is non-stationary and we can see there's heavy auto, there's a decent amount of auto correlation, both, uh, on the auto correlation function and also on the partial auto correlation function. However, there is kind of like a spike right here and then it starts to reduce. Okay. So when we're doing this, um, what we can do is also look at, um, what is it? The, uh. Um, uh, what is it? We can, we can also look at the MSTL. So if we go to drinks, uh, select sales, TS, MSTL and auto plot it. Uh, oops, auto plot. We can see that it, it's removing the trend and now we kind of have a, uh, uh, a non-stationary thing we're trying to predict. Okay. So what happens if we actually try to do some non-stationary forecasting using an ARIMA model? Okay. And let's, let's just see, let's just see what happens. So we're going to do drinks, select sales, and then time series. And we can do like an auto dot ARIMA. We see zero, one, and one. Okay. And then we can do a forecast and what we're trying to forecast, say, let's try to forecast the next three months, uh, and auto plot it. Oops. I always go auto plot. Right. See, it's trying to predict the average with some nice confidence intervals. Great. So that's basically it for the, uh, for the, uh, Arma sections. Um, Again, armor and models are actually pretty straightforward. However, there's a decent amount of actual um, uh, visual analysis and season and DC uh, detrending uh, the actual data. So one thing that I thought would be interesting to also to work with is uh, looking at a a part of the insurance time series analysis using linear models. So if we go back to here. We can see it that they actually have a uh, a regression models for time series, right? And what they're trying to do is uh, uh, do what the ARMA model is doing. However, try to uh, fix it. And one thing that we can do is kind of show how uh, how we can do transformations. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do it on the sales data or the the drinks data. And what we can do is we can do a uh, mutate and say uh, sales equals log 10, uh, log, uh, log sales. I think it's because, oh wait, is it log 10? Log 10 sales. Actually we'll say, uh, log 10 sales equals sales. And we, then we can do a, uh, ggplot x equals date, y equals sales plus gm line plus gm line. And then say y equals, uh, log 10 sales. Oh. Ooh, actually, maybe I should do a uh, gather. So key equals key value equals value my state. And then we can do uh, uh, y equals value color equals key. And we could do a uh, facet wrap key scales equals. 
equals free y. Uh, let's see here. X equals three two. Hmm, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Okay. So we did a simple transformation, but let's see how it affects uh, the actual uh, uh, forecast. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this again, select sales, uh, TS it, and then we'll just do an auto dot Rima. And this will be our regular Arima, right? And now we're going to do our logged uh, Arima model. So drinks, select sales, mutate sales equals log 10 sales, and then TS auto dot Arima. Okay, and now let's uh, compare them. Regular Arima, and then we'll say it was it logged Arima. Oh, actually, I'll just put it put it right there. Okay. So what's what's kind of interesting about this is we can see how um, the Arima models have different parameters now. Even though we just did a basic log ten transformation, the the models are very different. For example, the regular Arima model doesn't use any smoothing or AR models. However, it uses a moving average, whereas the log Arima uses a bunch of smoothing, specifically first and second order uh, auto regressive models. Okay. What else can we do? So what we can do is we can um, kind of uh, show some adjustments. So what they do is they actually use um, the lag residuals. In this case, we're actually going to use a uh, uh, we're going to use a linear model for this. So that's what we're going to do. So now what we're going to do is kind of transition to not just transformations, but using linear models to, to do basic regression stuff. In this case, I believe, uh, with linear regression models, we must have, uh, we must assume a non, uh, a stationary, uh, let's see here, initial linear trend plus a stationary data, but simply that, just, but I think since we have since it's saying that our trend uh is should be easy to forecast um and we look at our drinks we can be comfortable and say that okay well we can say that the trend can be forecasted using um a basic growth thing right and that's kind of showing right here with the log 10 of sales okay so instead we're going to create a, a a time column so we'll say time and that will equal to row number okay and we're gonna select uh, time and sales, and I'm actually gonna load up the uh, broom package. Okay, and we're gonna call this our model data. Cool. Ooh, actually, ah, oh, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. So we have model data sales, and then we're gonna, okay. So we have our model data. Uh, I'm gonna add some features just so we can throw in some um, dummy variables. So I'm gonna say mutate uh, month, uh, month equals month dot abbreviation, uh, month and then date, All right? Ooh, oh, gonna wrap that, All right? So now I have our month and then we're going to stick with that. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're, we'll stick with that. So ggplot, uh, no, we're, we're, we're going to select the, uh, uh, time month and sales, and we're going to throw in a linear model. So linear model, uh, and this, in this case, we're going to predict sales as a function of time and month. 
uh, time cannot course. Ooh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. What the cannot course class formula to a data. Oh, uh, data equals dot. Uh, there we go. So we have this. You can see how it created. Oh, let's see here. Uh, I created a dummy variable. Let's count it out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So uh, it's doing the dummy variable. So all these things are relative to the one that's being omitted. Uh, I want to see which one's actually being omitted. Uh, January, February, March, April. So April is the one uh, being omitted. Cool. So one thing that we can actually do is we can um, assign this and we'll say uh, forecast um, a linear forecast. So now we have an actual model object. What's cool about the broom package is we can actually do um, some basic tidy tidying on it. So we can say tidy linear forecast. And now we have all the estimates, right? Additionally, what we can do is uh, we can do a glance and we can kind of look at the uh, uh, the main things like that. We can also do is augment it. And this is the thing we wanted. So what we have is the predictions for uh, all of our uh, observations. But what we also have is our residuals. Okay. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add the residuals or the lagged residuals as a feature. Okay. We can also visualize our residuals. So we're going to, we should just do that first. So ggplot as x equals time, y equals dot standard dot resid plus geom uh, point. Right. And we can see that there is a, a pattern emerging from our residual analysis, right? Where it's kind of trying to produce this value and on the tail ends, uh, it's uh, overestimating it. Okay, so say so looking at the residuals. Okay, so we're gonna throw this back in. So now that we have these things, what we can do is we can actually do a uh, uh, we we can um, we can add these things into our lag residuals. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're going to select the time and dot standardized dot, uh, residuals. And we're going to call it residuals, uh, resid, uh, res residuals equals that. So that's our residuals. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to add, we're going to do a little, um, we're going to basically, uh, do a join on it, right? So we have this, uh, we're going to do a left join using this and we'll say by equals C time equal. Oh, actually we just said time equals time. So we have our residuals, but we can't, that that's going to cause some data leakage, right? And we don't want to do that. So we're going to do a mutate and we'll say, uh, lagged residuals equals of uh, lag, uh, residuals. And we're going to do it for one period, right? So we have last month's residuals. Uh, obviously the first month will not have residuals and we'll do a drop NA. So we're going to do this model, oops, model data with resid. Right. And we're going to create our new model. So in this case, we're going to say model with, uh, oh, what is it called? We said, uh, linear forecast with resid, resid. And we'll do a, a linear model using, uh, oops, data with resid. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to predict, uh, sales as a using time month and the lagged residual lagged 
residuals, the data will equal to oh, model data. Cool. So now when we have that, we can evaluate and compare both models. So we have our linear uh, forecast with residuals. We can also do a basic uh, summary of it, right? And we can analyze our p-values. For example, July is not stati statistically significant. Also, um, and our September is not not statistically significant. That's kind of interesting. Um, however, we really can't re remove it because it is a function of uh, our months. Additionally, what we can see is our actual lag residuals are statistically significant. Uh, which means that uh, we can kind of say, okay, that's fine. We should actually keep this feature into it because it must improve our uh, model performance. But when actually comparing models, so if we look at our uh, linear forecast summary, we can also look at the p-values and we can see the same thing where these guys are, uh, less are still not statistically significant. But if we do um, some tidying where we do a, uh, say, oops, uh, tidy. Uh, actually, we can just do uh, what is it? A uh, glance, uh, and then we can uh, say mutate model equals resid, uh, and then we can add this guy in. Uh, no resid, and let's do a uh, arbine. Oops. We can do a gather key equals key value equals value minus a uh, model, right? And then we can evaluate it uh, pretty well. So x equals model, y equals value, plus gm uh, column plus facet wrap, key scales equals free. And we'll throw in a, a fill equals, um, uh, was it model? Cool. So what are we seeing here? There's not a huge difference between these models. Okay. But, um, I'm going to look at this thing instead. Oh, we look at this. So, um, charts show a a small diff between models. But if we look at, say, uh, let's see here, their AIC and BIC scores, we can see the one with residuals does improve the BIC and AIC scores um, where you want the lower AIC or BIC. Okay, so how can we improve this model? Um, let's let's kind of add in a transformation. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's, let's add a transformation. Okay. In this case, I'm actually going to go back, uh, grab this, say log, uh, forecast with residuals. And this, in this case, we're going to take the log, uh, log 10 of sales. And let's look at the transformation. Okay. So interesting. Uh, we can also do a augment. Okay. We have our lag residuals. Uh, okay. So we have that. Um, interesting. Okay. So when I'm actually comparing these two models, so we have our logged model and also our linear model, we actually kind of have to do, um, oops, augment. We actually have to do some uh, corrections. Rename uh, logged, uh, what sales equals one. Okay, there we go. We can just do that. Okay, and then mutate uh, sales equals uh, 10 to the power of sales. There we, there we go. Okay. And then we can do a, uh, a lagged what dot 
fitted equals 10 to the power of dot fitted and we can evaluate it okay so then we can say uh, uh mutate uh, uh was it how, how should we do it mean absolute error so mean absolute error so absolute error equals absolute times sales minus dot dot fitted Uh, what? Mutate uh, error equals sales minus dot fitted. Okay, and then absolute of that. And then we'll take the average. So mean of error. Uh, and then say na to rm equals true. Oh. Summarize, uh, summarize, uh, MAE equals mean error. Okay. And then we can do this. So mutate, uh, error equals absolute of, uh, sales minus dot fitted summarize MAE equals, uh, mean error. And we can see that our mean absolute error is a little bit lower using the log linear forecasting with residuals. I know that was a, a little quick. Um, I'm sure I'm going to clean up this video and kind of remove a lot of me going through it, but I kind of want to do a, a kind of a quicker video and kind of show the steps of kind of like we're learning a, uh, a new data science concept and kind of showing you guys about, uh, forecasting methods. So I'll see you guys next week and I'll tell you on.